Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to learn about use cases of Web3. We are not only going to learn about the good use cases, but we are also going to see the bad use cases. Now, we are going to start with a bad use case. So, we are saying bad use case, but it's just for now. Since technology is always evolving, sometimes when we say it's a bad use case in time, it can be a good use case since technology evolved and also vice versa. If we say bad use case or good use case, just know that we are saying this for now. All right. So in this use case, we are going to examine a platform like YouTube. So there are three main challenges with this platform. The first challenge is the storage. So the first problem with the storage is that it will be costly. We are saying costly because storing this amount of data in a decentralized network like IPFS would be really costly and it would be also inefficient to actually work with that many of data storing them and also retrieving them in a decentralized network. It wouldn't be more efficient than a decentralized one. And also, we have the redundancy problem. Even though redundancy is one of the selling points of blockchain, in our case, it can cause a lot of unnecessary large video duplication, which can create a lot of data which would have no use in the storage. The second challenge is the streaming. Let's say streaming here. So the first problem with the streaming is its technical complexity. Since the centralized network depends on separate and decentralized nodes for the streaming process, we would need a really, really good coordination between the nodes, which would be too complex to implement in most cases. The second problem here is the latency. Since the centralized network in general would lack the optimized routing, we wouldn't have the same efficiency from the network. And then finally, also content quality would be a little bit problem because of the lack of central authority in this case. So we would need to implement solution for the centralized network, which can change in time. And also it will be still hard to maintain a decentralized network's content quality. Now that we talk about content quality, we can say the third challenge that we are going to face here is the content moderation. Since we lack of central authority, the content moderation would be harder with the topics like copyright issues or exclusive content. So with central authority, it would be much easier to handle this kind of issues and monetize them. We can also say the same thing for legal issues too. Since we are dealing with a lot of countries with a lot of complex and very different law systems, it would be hard to implement a system that actually is aligned with every law in every country that is functioning. And now, as we can see in this example, even though we have a lot of benefits in the Web3 field over the Web2, in this case, a central structure would be better for the user experience and also for the development purposes. And on top of this, for the legal issues and content monetization, it's very essential to have a central base in this example. Now, let's look at a good use case. Here, let's say we have a decentralized supply chain management for organic food products. Even though the name doesn't sound that good, let's look at its benefits so we can understand that why it's a good use case. The first benefit is transparency in sourcing. Let's say transparency in sourcing here. What does it mean? It means that the buyers can see how this product is grown, where it's come from, and what was its actually lifetime during the process from its grown and coming to the table. The second one is real-time tracking. With the real-time tracking, distributors and retailers actually can track the process of the shipment. So this would reduce the delays and would improve the inventory management. Now let's look at the other benefits and then move on with the process of this system. So the third one we have is quality assurance. Let's say quality assurance here. The fourth one is fraud prevention.
And the fifth one is streamlined payments. These benefits actually transform the process of this decentralized supply chain management for organic food products system. I know it's a very, very long name. Let's look at this process and then we can understand this better. First, we have the farm registration. So here's farmers register information about their products, how it's grown, what it is, and where it's coming from. So every information about the product would be here. Then we would have planting and growing. Here, processes like fertilization would be recorded. Then we have harvesting. Here we would have the information about the date and the amount and every other necessary information about the harvesting process. Then we have processing and packaging. Followed by transportation. retail sale, and finally, consumer interaction. Here, the idea is that we have the information from the beginning. And as we know, once we put information on a blockchain, we cannot alter that information. Hence, everyone can trust the information on the blockchain. So that's one of the biggest selling points of the blockchain. So here, what we are doing is, we are actually taking this advantage of the blockchain and we are constructing a system on top of it. And let's look again how. Since we are actually putting information from the beginning, starting with the farm registration, we can see the beginning of this product's lifetime. Then we have the information of planting and growing, harvesting, processing and packaging, transportation, retail sale, and finally, consumer interaction. So since we have the information in every step of the way, we can have a clear lifetime of a product that can be checked during these different processes. Now let's look at the challenges of the system because I'm aware that the having challenges is there since the beginning. So let's move on with the challenges. Here we have four big challenges, let's say. The first one is data integrity. We are actually recording the lifetime of the process. The biggest problem is that we need to be sure that it's correct. We said that it can be checked during each process, but this would require a lot of oversight and it would be really hard to adapt to this in the beginning. Then we have the technology adoption. Since the system requires everyone in this process, beginning from the farmers, we would need to learn some degree of a new technology so that can also create a learning curve, which wouldn't be that easy. The second one is technology adoption. And the third one is interoperability. Since we are creating a new system here, our system should be able to work with the previous supply chain systems since we're actually adding decentralization here, which wouldn't be that easy in this case. And the final one is, of course, cost. Having this system and working with this system would be costly for farmers first place. And then the cost would be problem mainly for like smaller farmers. Initial setting up and the maintenance of the system would require some degree of investment in this situation. As a conclusion, our NIF system has a lot of benefits that's coming from the blockchain. So with this system, we can have a very transparent process of a food so we can exactly know what we are eating and how our food is processed and this oversight can actually affect the process of food growing so even though there can be a really good benefit as we can see it doesn't come without challenges the challenges are not very easy since it's identifiable it's also solvable so in this case a blockchain would be a good solution 
for our current systems. That's all for this video. Thank you very much and I will see you on the next one.